We are a go. Hey, how you doing, everybody? We are on episode three of our app stream. My name is Hansel. I'm the founder and CEO of The Coder School. I'm here with my man, Wayne. I'm Wayne. I'm here with Hansel. And uh, yeah, episode three. Really, I couldn't believe episode two. So this is even harder to believe, actually. But That's right. We, we barely got by episode two. And now we're on episode three. So we're here to uh, entertain you guys and teach you guys a little bit and then uh, jump into also uh, teaching you how to make an app. Now, this uh, episode is actually for a little bit more advanced, I would say. We're going to jump into some logic where <clears throat> you really have to think about it a little bit. Um, but for those of you who are beginner coders, you can still follow along with us by, uh, by just sort of copying some of the code and, and you can change it around uh, to kind of play around with it that way. Uh, so for some of you older kids, uh, feel free to stick around. We are going to use Scratch. We're going to show you some Python and JavaScript as well. Uh, so uh, for some of you older kids, it might be uh, pretty cool for you guys as well. So what we're going to do is what we always do. We're going to start off with a technical talk. Uh, what we Tech call talk. Our tech talk. Tech, tech talk. Talks. What's that short for? What's that short for? A technical talk a jig <laughs> Right. That's right. A technical talk a jig and it's short and it's catchy and it's called Tech Talk. I yeah, think in episode one, we, we kind of introduced it like that. <laughs> yeah. Kind of interesting. Um, so uh, first, a quick shout out to our backgrounds. We always like to do this. I'm uh, sitting down here. This is our Sarasota, Florida location. Shout out to Allison, Pete, and the crew out there. Wayne, where are you at, man? La Jolla, beautiful San Diego. If you just stepped outside the door, I'd be in La Jolla, if you could really be in this picture. That's where the picture is. I'm sure it's sunny down there. So shout out to the few people. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the people <laughs> in Florida. Did you guys see that glitch? It was actually just a glitch of the video. Not That's me. a Facebook live issue. Facebook live issue. <laughs> All right, let's get going. So uh, Tech Talk. So today we are going to talk about uh, something uh, that we do in our schools, which is teaching kids how to code. We're going to talk about languages. We're going to talk about the differences between a couple of languages. Uh, wow, Wayne, you and I are wearing matching uh, outfits here, a little bit dorky. Yeah, well, Lots matching logos, but I have the hoodie. I'm cool. Nice. Hoodie. Do, the, do the super cool coder hoodie thing, yeah. I'm not as cool yeah. today. I'll look like the Unabomber, but yeah, it'll mess <laughs> up my hair. My hair is getting so long now. If I wear a hat, man, it is like hat head. That's why you guys shave it all off. <laughs> yeah, or I'm just going to go beanie, maybe beanie, episode four, beanie. Episode four is beanie episode, so stay tuned for that one. Stay tuned. Uh, you will okay. not want to miss that. Languages. What are we doing here? So um, at the Coder School, what we do is we teach kids how to code, but we teach them in a very customized way, meaning like we can kind of teach kids all kinds of different stuff depending on their level. But what we found is a lot of kids uh, end up doing the same kind of stuff. Now, I don't want this app, chain, app stream to start sounding like a marketing thing, so we're not going to talk about that too much. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the language. No marketing. No marketing. No marketing at all, even though no like we're like right in our schools and we have our logos everywhere. That's true, but that's but subliminal. That that's subliminal. That's subliminal cool. marketing is okay. So, um, all right, so the uh, languages we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Scratch and other uh, block languages like that. We're going to talk about JavaScript. We're going to talk about Python and tiny bit about Java. Um, so Wayne, why don't you kick it off? Wayne is our master curriculum operations guy. So he has it yeah. all up in his head. Yeah, so I mean, Wayne, the four what languages. Scratch, what does Scratch yeah, stand yeah. for? Scratch <laughs> stands for, um, well, you know, I don't know. Have you ever had an itch, an itch to code? So, um, well, Scratch, it was invented by MIT, which we all aspire to have gone there or if you're young you want to go there it's an awesome school but they created this amazing drag and drop language as Hansel said so I think you know a couple of the key characteristics of this language are that it's drag and drop so you're not dealing with you know if you're younger and you're not the best typer don't worry about it you can handle scratch no problem at all and it also by doing that it eliminates all the syntax and things that you might be worried about in some of the other languages and so you're really just focused on what's you know going on in your mind the, the the logic and trying to solve the problem and what you're trying to build and so it's beautiful yeah. you can just drag and drop you know it's almost like legos with logic on it in your computer yeah and you guys probably all know this stuff already so but uh um, you know, we're going to show, uh, we're going to do our mo most of our code today because it's going to be done in Scratch. Uh, the coolest thing about it is that you can build something really graphical and fun really fast, like in about an hour, right? So that's why we use it. That's why in our app stream, we can use it so fast. 
I thought about doing Python and JavaScript, but I just can't type that fast. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Wayne, what about uh, language number two? So let's say after elementary school, uh, some of these kids who are what would you say, nine, 10 years old? Yeah, that's that. the perfect range right around there, nine or 10. So if you've been learning to code and you probably started off in scratch for the reasons that we just talked about, then you're probably starting to move into something like a JavaScript when you're around nine or 10. Um, it's going to be JavaScript or Python, but maybe we can talk about JavaScript first because either or are perfect first languages, uh, first type languages to get into after scratch. And so uh, JavaScript, the first one that I'll just talk about, it, it, it's known for being the language of the web because it's the only language that actually uh, can run in your browser. And so all the websites, so just think about that. Everybody lives on browsers and all the websites that you've ever been to, they're all running JavaScript. So, you know, just think of JavaScript as, as, as the web um, and that's what it's famous for. It, it's also a pretty it's an easier language to understand, so there are harder ones. So JavaScript is known for being, you know, pretty easy to read, um, being the language of the web. Uh, and also, it kind of is always married together with HTML and CSS. Those are kind of the three things that go together to build your web pages. So I'm being your dicta dictation machine here, Wayne. I'm typing out all your notes for you. I'll be here right. minutes I'm, I'm, for now. I'm pointing, I'm pointing at the screen. Now they're perfect. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, anything else to add? I know you do tons of JavaScript, Hansel. I know you've even, like, in our recent, uh, you know, going remote, been building tools left and right and things like that. Um, I, the, the main thing I have to add is the reason why I think JavaScript is so cool is because it runs on all browsers. If you make JavaScript, that means pretty much everybody in the world can run it pretty easily because everybody has a browser. So that's why I think it's pretty cool that, uh, that uh, if you're able to be an expert in JavaScript, what they call a full stack developer, that's one of the part of the stacks. It, it's actually a pretty cool language to learn. So, yeah. okay, so that's JavaScript, what else? So the other one that I think most, it, it seems to be very popular these days is Python. Now everybody, you know. Buzzword. Buzz, 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 yeah, buzz, it, buzz. it is like a buzzword now. It's so popular. I think that there's so many job postings out there looking for a Python programmer and things like that. So, you know, um, lots of enterprise co companies are using it, you know, uh, to power their applications. Uh, funny little thing. I mean, it's actually didn't get its name based off of the snake. It got it from a comedy team called Monty Python back in the sixties, which was oh, really? really funny. Yeah. I didn't That's know that. where it really came from. Yeah. So just kind of a funny thing. And it's, <laughs> You know, none of you are, uh, you know, old enough to remember Monty Python, but you could dig up some of their stuff in the archives. They are very funny. They, they did a lot of funny movies. They started off as like a comedy skit, but that's where they, uh, they, they came up with the name, which is pretty, pretty. So uh, is the language also quite hilarious? <laughs> the language is quite hilarious or <laughs> just appreciative, I would say. Dude, it, I teed that up for you so well. <laughs> yeah, so... If you're not laughing already, uh, but, but in all seriousness, it's known for being very, so if I said JavaScript was somewhat human readable, Python is most famous for being even more human readable. So when we uh, look at a couple code snippets from it, you'll see Python is actually almost like you're reading just a sentence. It has the least amount of syntactical, you know, gotchas and things. So it doesn't even use semicolons. So that's one huge Which thing. is crazy. <laughs> that is, if you're a real coder and you've d dealt with uh, all the other languages, semicolons is kind of like, there's no language without it. But then here comes Python and says, I'm going to it does use a lot of colons. <laughs> yeah, a lot of colons. So, you know, it can, you know, there's a joke there for you somewhere, Hansel. I'm not sure where you're going with that. But. The colon joke? All right. Well, what yeah. bathroom jokes for episode two? Now we're going to move yeah. on to different kind of jokes. <laughs> That's true. We're going to go into uh, grammar. We'll do a grammar joke about colon. All right. So the last language you're going to jump into is let's just talk a little bit about Java then. Yeah. So let's see. Java, interestingly, let's see. That one um, came out around, I think, 1990 or so. Uh, wow. Good trivia bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So most of you weren't born. Uh, unfortunately, I guess we were born. But who, who invented it, Java? Um, 
Sun, a company. Yeah. Um, yeah Does anybody yeah. remember Sun Microsystems? <laughs> yeah, if you remember Sun Microsystems, you're old like us. But yeah. there was a company, yeah, they, they invented And then Oracle, which buys everything, eventually bought Sun. And so they own Java now. But it, it's a, a, a more complex language, much more complex, much more difficult to, uh, it's not as human readable. So if you look at Java code, a lot of times you'd look at it and not intuitively be able to figure out what it's doing. And if you're writing Java code, you're very likely going to have a syntactical or a, a typo or you know missing a semicolon, missing a paren. And even though you've got the logic perfect in your head, you know, if you're missing one of those little things, it's going to be very frustrating uh, because it, it needs to be perfect. Um, yeah. And, it's much and more the other thing, though, is, is for all you kids who are a little bit older and for all, all you parents out there, you guys probably know that right now AP Computer Science is based on Java, uses Java. So that's one right. of the biggest reasons why we teach a lot of it. A lot of our high schoolers will come in asking for extra help, and we will teach them uh, Java so that they can get an A++ on their AP Computer Science. That's right. That's right. So there you go. That's that's what it is. So uh, if you see, if you guys see the uh, language, I mean, it's not like there's only four languages in the world. <laughs> oh yeah, not at all. Not at like all. A, a million languages. There's so many of them out there. Uh, these are the ones we typically focus on because these are the bigger ones that folks tend to use more, and and some of them are just very easy to uh, sort of teach with. Um, yeah. It's worth noting, though, uh, for all you kids out there who are trying to move from scratch into your next level, a typed out language like JavaScript or Python, uh, it is pretty hard. It is very different. Uh, you, you know, you guys know with Scratch, it's just drag this, drag that. With JavaScript or Python, it's you have to type everything out. And after you type it out, you have to type everything else out. <laughs> and then after that, you got to type more out. So before you get stuff on the screen and moving and games and stuff like that, it's, it's, you got to type a lot. Uh, but once you're done typing, it runs pretty fast and it's pretty smooth, but uh, it takes a lot of work uh, because they're pretty powerful languages. Yeah. So and don't get yeah, yeah. yeah. And don't get too caught up in any particular language. They all use the same logic, the logic. Learn to think like a coder and it doesn't matter what language you're using. You, there might be languages that haven't been invented yet. And if you know the logic, you're going to be a rock star. I'm pointing, at, I'm pointing at you, Wayne. Should we do a virtual high five for that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Fist pump, fist pump. Oh, you just wrapped my fist. Okay. Oh, wait. You know what? what you I'm not going it, to the camera. <laughs> you know where I was going? I was putting my fist actually to the screen, thinking like, <laughs> that was going to do that. And now, see, nothing. You're so high tech. The camera <laughs> so is not your screen. There you go. There you go. Lessons yes. learned. That is a fist bump because that is so true. And you guys will see once we get to the end of the Scratch app that we're making for you guys. Uh, it's really not about like knowing what blocks are in Scratch. It really doesn't matter if you know what the blocks are. What really matters is that you understand the logic because when you understand it in one language, it's probably going to be really, really close in another language. Coding is not about knowing these blocks. It's not about knowing commands. It's not about knowing what to type. It's about the logic. It's about thinking through the logic. That's why we think it's so important uh, for a lot of kids to learn. It really helps you step-by-step uh, -step think through things. So cool. So that's our tech talk um, uh, for today. I'm going to now start the coding. So now, now you guys can uh, wake back up. You're going to get to the good stuff. <laughs> the good stuff. Now coding. I will share. What should I share? I will share my Google Chrome. All right. Ooh, Are we sharing anything perfect. weird here? <laughs> No, yeah, I was like, those are your family photos, Hansel, and um, <laughs> um, are only okay. wearing a towel. <laughs> that's good, that's, that's good. Okay. okay, so okay. here is Scratch, guys. We are going to build an app today that will, since we are still in this COVID crisis, we are still doing a little bit of COVID stuff. So today we're going to do something that <laughs> emulates flattening the curve. So the curve itself is actually kind of hard to draw, and that's a lot of the logic, which will be kind of interesting. We're going to have this curve kind of come down. And then uh, as the game player, you are going to pretend you're a scientist. And you have to Ooh. solve problems super fast in order to uh, squash uh, the curve. So I'm actually going to demo it for you first real quick. Wait a minute. How do I do that? Oh, I better sign in. So I'm on Scratch yeah. here. So we're going to go a little bit faster this time because this app stream is for a little bit more uh, 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 intermediate, uh, beginner to in intermediate folks. So uh, 
if you need to take a break, you can always hit pause and rewind and, and uh, see where we're going. So, and we'll freeze just like this for you. If you hit pause, <laughs> you hit, somebody hit pause. Somebody hit pause. <laughs> okay. Unpause. 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 Unpause us, please. All right. So we're going to show you. I'm going to show you here real quick. Uh, I hope this thing works. Yes. Here's my curve. See how my curve is getting bigger and bigger. And this is the line where if you hit the line, then you lose. So That's basically right. what you need to do is you need to answer these questions as fast as you can. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm already Better losing. get it, 14, seven, seven, uh, my, eight. My math is, you yell it out and I'll type it, 13, man. 13, eight, 16, Look, See how I'm flattening the curve, guys? 10. Oh, it's getting so eight. low, so low. Eight. And every time it changes color too. 16, See, 11. so I'm, I'm flattening the curve. So that's what this Ooh. game about. If I, if I don't answer anything, you'll see that just like the coronavirus, the curve might start popping higher and higher if we don't do anything about it. And so what happens if it goes all the way to the top and it gets to that red line? Red is bad. Oh, you lose. Good, so that's what this good. game is about. That's what we're going to code. You guys will see that this curve actually is kind of a curve. It kind of curves up and curves down. Right. A little bit of a... Stair a little step. jaggedy, a little <laughs> jaggedy, but as Hansel said, I mean, it's hard to program it perfectly smooth. That yeah. might be a whole nother lesson, but yeah. it's still curving, but a jaggedy curve. Jaggedy curve, especially, especially because we are here uh, trying to teach you guys in, in an hour. <laughs> um, yeah. It can be done, and you guys actually, we challenge you to do it, um, but uh, we're going to do the jaggedy version just so you guys see, uh, can, so we can get through it in an hour. All right. So here we go. So let's let's start with a brand new project. Uh, so we're going to take this cat first, and we're going to change it to a dot. We're going to uh, use this pen functionality instead, uh, and have have it draw behind them. And because cats don't really leave a trail behind them usually. Sometimes they do. Hansel. Sometimes they do. Back to the bathroom humor. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. All right. So we're going to take this cat. Let's go to costumes and let's just make uh, let's just make a new guy. So go down here, hit paint. We're just gonna do a tiny little circle waga, here, and cool. then we can delete these guys. We don't need the cats. So your main sprite's just gonna be this dot. All right. So let's go back to the code. Uh, so with the code, what do we want to do? So we're gonna try to make the curve first here, guys. Um, so we're going to start it pretty easy, but after a while, you'll have to kind of dig into the logic a little bit. Um, so for, for, for now, I guess follow along and, and, and see if you understand what I'm doing here. So I'm going to put a forever loop in here. I'm going to actually, let's see, sorry. I'm going to start off when green flag clicked. We always like to click the green flag. So yeah. And what I want to do here is I'm trying to draw this guy going from left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, because eventually we're going to have him, you know, make a little curve inside, right? So, yeah. But first, right, you got to find the bottom left corner, where to start from. That's right. Actually, I don't even know typically, how would you do that, Wayne? Would you just drag your guy there and look? I would drag my guy there, or there's that cool little thing under backdrop. You could go grab that grid backdrop. That uh, actually is pretty cool. You could just uh, grab that. Oh, the it. grid. Yeah. Okay. That's too many clicks yeah. for me, man. I, I'm a yeah, one all right. kind of guy. <laughs> but you're right. You can just grab that um, dot and put it where you want to start. And uh, okay. So we're so let's just say we're going to start it here. So it actually fills this out for you. Go to two. So negative two thirty five and minus one twenty three in the Cartesian coordinate system. Yeah. X, y, Wayne, a trivia Cartesian. question: Who is the Cartesian Cartesian coordinate system named after? Mr. Ding. Cartesian, Kim Kardashian, <laughs> Kim Cartesian. That's right, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I think so. That's right. right. There was a famous show. I mean, about it was her, her father back in the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty sure it was named after Rene Descartes, who was a uh, famous mathematician way back in the day. Cartesian coordinates. So Cartesian coordinates just basically means, you know, x is everything going from left to right, and why is everything up and down? Wayne is doing the Ultraman thing. Yeah, the Ultraman. I'm, I'm protected. I'm safe. <laughs> All right. So forever. Okay. So forever. Okay. Let's let's stop dilly dallying and do some coding. <laughs> yeah. Let's get there. Okay. So we want to go all the uh, we want to go all the way here when we first click the green uh, flag, and then we are just going to change x by ten forever. Um, 
actually maybe not forever. Should we do it forever? No, we should not do it forever. We're going to go repeat until, Ooh. you can tell this is more difficult because I'm have to think through it. <laughs> Where's my Thinking repeat? like a coder. Thinking like a coder. Thinking like a coder, that's very important. Okay. Well, so you're gonna keep doing it, right? And then until you either hit the red line or, or yeah. So like this time line. I'm gonna start off very easy. We're just gonna go until we touch the edge. So ah, good call. All right. This is pretty easy to read, right? What's it gonna do? It's gonna go here first, and it's gonna keep going. Change x by ten, and Mr. Uh, Descartes says <laughs> every time you change x by 10 you're going to move over a little bit right so this right. guy so notice all yeah the way. y so the y is not changing so you're going to just not go up or down just go to the right oh oopsie i'm already touching the edge that's why it didn't do anything right so that is why in right. a little bit by saying go to negative 230 so if you guys have that you guys your ball might be a little bit different size so um i'm going to start it at 230 but uh, just make sure your ball is inside the screen and it should work. There you go. Boom. Oh, there you go. And then so it this is a dot that's not leaving any kind of uh, poop trails or any kind of trails right now. We got to have yeah, some trails. And if you look at your screen here on the bottom, you can see he went to X equals 240. So we went where, from negative Where are you pointing, Wayne? <laughs> yeah, I'm pointing in the, below your canvas, I guess. Uh, below where it runs. You know, right. where it shows the X, here. right? Here, yeah. is this you where you're pointing? Yep, exactly, okay. right there. Cool, yep. Yep, that yeah. shows you exactly what your X and Ys are. Good point. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna drag a little line behind him. And so what we need to do is, I actually have a pen here already. You guys might not. This is actually a new type of code block, which you can use. To do that, click on the code area, add extension down here. Then the pen is an extension. Look at all these other things too. You guys can play around with all these other things. Makey, makey, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, translate. Look at that. You can translate into wow. That's cool. Remember Nihama. <laughs> oh, I remember Nihama. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pick the pen. So what the pen does is it lets you um, draw wherever your sprite is. So you can see all these new uh, code blocks here. Some of these uh, will help uh, us today in doing this drawing. So let's. The first thing we want to do is uh, I'll I'll just show you right away. You might run into this issue, but you wanna you wanna go to this point, and then right after that, you wanna erase everything that that was drawn before it. Otherwise, you'll yeah. have squiggly lines all over the place. Yeah, every time you play the game, you'd make a mess and it'll be just messier and messier. Gotta that's right. clean so, up after yourself. That's right, it's like clean up your room. So this is a one, one line code to clean up your room. So it erases the entire screen and then puts the pen down. When it puts the pen down, what does that mean? It means it puts the pen down and then just draw, wherever the guy goes, it'll leave a pen trail behind him. So I'm thinking this should work, let's hit uh, green flag and there you go so uh, line straight across so that's pretty easy the curve is so flat we we are such winners <laughs> hopefully this is what it'll look like in some short you, amount of time <laughs> yeah hopefully sooner the better sooner the better sooner the better all right so, so that's pretty easy that's way too easy for you uh, intermediate folks so what we want to do now is actually draw the curve and if you guys uh, <clears throat> can think about how so, so the one thing I want to make sure is important to say is, is uh, for you young kids, you, you can definitely draw, you know, drag in the code just like I'm doing. But the really the important thing is understand why it's being done. Dragging in code isn't really coding. If you're just copying what somebody else is doing, you're not really coding. You're just sort of copying what somebody else is doing. Um, it's like if you took somebody else's book and you just wrote down all the same words, then you didn't really write a book. You just copied his book, right? So for coding, the reason why it's so important to understand what this is doing is that you're not always gonna wanna draw a curve, right? Maybe the next time you're gonna wanna draw a circle or something, I don't know, a spiral or whatever you wanna do. Um, in those cases, you have to know the logic and how to put, put, put everything together. So as I'm going through this, uh, please also try to understand why we're doing this, why each command is put where it is and, and instead of just drawing it there, or yeah, dragging it there. Yeah. And I mean, if, if you're not following right away, I mean, sometimes, yeah, you can kind of start with a copy of it, but then as you are using it, the, the key is to get to the point where you do understand it. And that's the only way you could ever change it up. Um, so, right. you know, that's not to say that almost every coder hasn't copied code to start with, but that's the right. fact that they're able to tweak it then to do what they want to do, that meant that they, they understood it. So it's okay to copy code, but you just got to understand it. 
That is such a good point. There's a lot of programs out there that are a bajillion lines long, but a lot of the times the, the coders are copying chunks of code in, but once they copy it in, they change it to do what they want it to do. So that's very, very common. In fact, almost every coder does that. It's just the almost right. the only way to code. Almost everybody copies some code, but then they tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we're gonna. So now that it's going straight across, we need to change the y uh, as well. So we want it to go up and down. So first, I'll just show you guys that uh, first of all, y going this way, is that positive or negative? Well, I guess we can just answer that. It's negative. <laughs> yeah. I'll just show you quick. The real quick way is it, is to just do it. So I'm gonna put negative ten here. Hit hit the button. Wait, I'm totally wrong. Is it positive? <laughs> it's positive. Yeah, I it should be I positive. Should, I should it? have tried it first. <laughs> now <laughs> I'm like the fool. Right, now I look right. But like I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing. But you're actually just such a good actor, Hansel, because you really pulled that off. That was the <laughs> lesson that he was trying to teach you kids. That's right. It's only a lesson. Totally a yeah. test. I He's actually a professional kind of know actor. He's a professional <laughs> actor. He did that really, really well. Okay, now if I do plus 10, is that going to work? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so you see, guys, you see, guys, how it's a stair step. So, why is it a stair step? Because, because the pen is actually following it. Right. We're going uh, x ten this way, x ten that way, ten this way, ten that way, ten this way, ten that way, and 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 the um, uh, the pen just follows wherever the sprite goes. That's why it goes straight up this way. Now, what we need to do is we need to have it go up and down. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna throw in a little bit of physics to you. A lot of games that you guys uh, would play has a little bit of physics feel to it, right? So I don't know, like Mario, any kind of platformer, like a Mario Brother thing, uh, Pokemon. Uh, what happens is that these, uh, if you have a ball, kind of go up and down like that, you know, kind of slow down and come down really fast. That is gravity. Um, we're gonna kind of use a similar formula here. We're going to dig into gravity, I think, in our next app stream. But for now, we're going to use a similar formula. So what we want to do is actually we want it to go up by a certain amount and then over by the same amount, 10. Let's just say x is always going to be 10. And then we want it to go up by less amount and go over by 10. And then go up by less amount and go over by 10, less amount, less amount, less amount, until we go up by 0. And then we start going down, in other words, going negative. So I hope that kind of makes sense. We'll, we'll start putting the code in here. What we need to do to do that is we need to create a variable. Um, my yeah, variable. My variable. That's pretty generic, generic name. So this is going to be um, the change in height, I guess, is what we're going to call it. So this, sometimes people uh, who are awesome coders might call this delta but we're gonna call this change in height. So rename the variable, right click, rename the variable. We're gonna call it change in height so we all know exactly what that means. Um, is also known as delta, which is kind of like a cool way of saying change in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, or like if, you know, if you're in Tom Cruise's, um, you know, the, the Air Force or, um, you know, the Top Gun, delta <laughs> would be a cool name. That'd be my, um, That'd be your what call, do they call, call it? Sign? Call. Delta. That'd be my call sign, delta. I'm gonna call you delta from now on. You be delta. That's right. I'm Delta. <laughs> okay, so change in height, we're gonna say, let's see. So first we have to set it. So the change in height, uh, we're just gonna start it off up here and change in height, we're gonna call it uh, 10. Um, let's see, I don't see my camera. Where's my camera? I can't tell what I'm doing. Here we go. So 10 means, so so if you, if you 10 means, well, let me add in the code first. <laughs> We are going to change y by change in height. Oh yeah. So what happens is uh, in the in down at the bottom here, uh, it will go up by ten, and uh, and also x will go over by ten. And the next time we want it to go up by nine, so we want it to go up by ten, then up by nine. Actually, the video is not doing me justice. I'm going to do it here. We want it to go up by not 10, then up by 9, then up by 8, then up by 7, all the way until it gets a 0. And then we want to go up by negative 1. What does up by negative 1 mean? Down, right? Down, yeah. Exactly. So what, what that will do is basically it'll, it will make it look like it is a ball that's kind of uh, going up in the air and coming back down. If you throw a ball up in the air right now, you'll notice that it goes pretty fast and then it slows down at the top and then it comes down and starts going really fast. That's what this is gonna look like. That's what this should look like. You would make Sir Isaac Newton proud. 
That's right. That's right. Sir Isaac Newton. I should have made that thing into an apple. Um, well, so change too late y now. by blah, 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 too late now. Yeah. So, so as soon as we change Y by change in height, we are going to change our change in height. Right. We are going to change it by yeah, negative we, one. Yeah. We got to make it less. So the next time around, it will be like you said, nine. That's right. It won't go up as high and eventually it'll go down to zero. Let's just see what happens right here. Woo. Look at that. Ooh. But look at that curvature. Like Doesn't it, it look like I threw a ball and it just kind yeah. of went, whoop. So that, that's actually how physics kind of works in some of these games, right? You, you kind of change how much you change. And in fact, that's how physics works in real life. You change how much up you go every, every second or whatever. Okay, so that's what happens there. So we got our little curve going. Now, all right, so Wayne, uh, let, me, let me quiz you since you're the only other guy on the call. <laughs> Right. How do I make how do I make this curve go higher? What's the fastest way to do that right now? Make the curve go a little bit higher. You've got to. Uh, um, I mean, you you could start your delta higher, right? That's right. So think about think about if you're home and you're throwing the ball and you throw it up kind of lightly. That means it's it, the speed just leaving leaving your hand is is not that high. If you throw it really hard, the speed that's leaving your hand is higher. So that's basically what the delta is. This is almost kind of like speed. It's leaving your hand. So yeah, this is like Peyton Manning throwing in the Super Bowl 50 when he was kind of old. But if you look at footage when he was younger, <laughs> that's right. the ball goes <laughs> and it starts off much, you know, higher. Ball goes. Go Super Bowl it. 50 was maybe his last hurrah where it was kind of more like this trajectory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if we change this thing to 30, oh, yeah. let's see what happens. 30. Let's Whoa, try it. it just Whoa. hits the top edge. And then it stops, of course, because we have touching that edge. That looks awesome, though. That's a good big throw, big throw. So let's Too see. Big. 20, there we go. Ooh. That's Peyton Manning back in the day. That's touchdown, <laughs> touchdown, yeah. That's right. Wayne and I are, are Peyton Manning fans. So, so Peyton, yeah. if you're watching, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Uh, okay, so that's, uh, that's how you change the curvature. So what we want to do is, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So we did drive by his house and try to, you know, get him to come outside. Peyton, you did not come out and say hi. <laughs> not Why not? Outside. Why not? I should show that picture right now. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, okay. So here's what we're going to do, though. So, so that's, that's basically how we're going to emulate the curve. That's pretty close to how we're going to do it. Um, there are better ways, but this is the sort of quickest way. Uh, let's put a loop around this thing so that we can do multiple loops. So what we wanted to do is go up here, then have a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller curve. Um, so let's put a, um, I think we're going to put a forever loop in here this time. Well, yeah, let's just, let's just start with a forever loop. So if we keep doing this, what's it going to do? I guess that's not really going to do much. That's not really going to do much. I want it to go forever. I want it to change the, uh, I want to start the height. So every, so this, this, you know how uh, Wayne said that we want to start the height at 20, that makes it a, a bigger throw, a higher throw. We right. want to change that height every time we run this curve. We're going to clear the screen and draw another curve with a slightly lower height, right? So how do we do that? So again, guys, if, if, you're, if you want to think through the logic, it's a great time to hit pause and see if you can figure it out yourself before uh, uh, we end up doing it here. So, <clears throat> okay, so we are going to set the, we are going to create a new variable. This new variable, make a variable, is going to have to uh, track uh, how high each curve is going to be. So we're going to call it initial height. Ah, good name. Good name. Yes. Initial height. So we always know what that thing is going to do. Initial height is going to be, we're going to set it here way up top. We're going to set it to, let's say 20, I guess. No, we're going to set it to 10. And eventually we wanted to get it to 20 because we're gonna go higher and higher. So set change in height delta to ooh, oops, 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 oops. I'm changing. I'm gonna set the initial height to 10. Oh right. <clears throat> um and actually I'm gonna I could also set this to 10, but if if it's good program programming practice, what would I do? You would just drag the initial height into there. That's right. Yeah. That's good programming yeah. practice. And the reason is. We can always change this 10 in one place only, and we don't have to change it again here. That's why it's good programming practice. So we start the initial height at 10. 
we're going to set the change in height to 10, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then we are going to go in here and we're going to uh, do this forever loop. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. The forever loop, we always have to erase it first and then pen down. And in fact, sorry if I'm going a little bit fast, guys, but uh, you guys can see that what we want to do is set, set our initial variables, and then we want to go forever and set, we want to go back to the starting point here. We want to erase the entire screen and then put, put our pen down again so that there aren't any weird lines anywhere. So we're going to put that pen down again, and then we're going to keep going until we touch the edge and do this code to draw the curve. Now at the end of that, what we need to do is we need to change the, at the end of drawing this curve, which ends right here, we are gonna need to change the, uh, the oops, 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 we're not gonna need to change it. Oh yeah, we are. We're gonna need to change our change in height by, um, we're gonna change it by, let's see. Set, we want it to go up a little bit, right? We want it to go up a little bit, right? So we want to set set it to I guess I guess we can change it by two. Change it by two or something, yeah. Yeah, change it. So now that we have a different change in height, we're gonna go back up here and. Uh, oh wait, we can't set the change in height. Oh, okay, that's what's faking me out, because we our change in height is already all messed up here because we've ch we've been changing it, so it's gonna be a different uh, height. That's uh, why we need the initial height. That's why, yeah. All right, so now we need to reset. We, so when we're done with our loop, we're, we're gonna set our change. We're gonna set our change in height to initial height. To start it over. To yeah. start it over, but we're going to change our initial height by two. So now the next time we run here, uh, initial height will be 12. And then we reset the, the change in height, the delta, to 12. Yeah. And then we come up here, and we go back to the start, and we do it again. Yeah, and it'll keep going higher. Should keep going higher. That's what we in think. theory. That's what I would think Let's at this try point. It. Let's try it. Boom, it's boom, boom. Going is higher. It higher. Is it getting higher? It's like Peyton it Manning is getting higher. Back age. That's right. <laughs> it's getting stronger. It's getting stronger. And that one All looks right, like so that's going to keep going because it, keep, it keeps hitting the Oh, edge. yeah. Now it's just going bonkers. Now it's going bonkers. All right, so <clears throat> so now I think that is pretty uh, much what we want to do for in terms of the curve. So now now we have the curve going up. Um, we could probably well I think we can just leave it like that. So so there are that that is a very rudimentary curve as you can see. One of the challenges for you intermediate coders is to make this curve much more smooth. Number one. And number two, not have it go flying down as, as fast. Like you can see that you can see that this curve is, is kind of not flattening out. It just keeps diving straight down. We wanted to kind of take a gradual, you know, gradual uh, flattening. Now, mm. if you could code that, then you would be a stud. That is actually pretty hard to code. Takes a lot of yeah. logic thinking. It's actually not a lot of code, but it takes a lot of logical thinking. Uh, we'll, we'll leave this part as this, this curve here for now, like that. Uh, what we're going to do now, though, is create the line so that we uh, can start asking the, the questions so you can, you know, start typing away and try to beat the curve. And try to beat the curve. That's beat right. the curve. So, beat the curve. That's what this beat game is about. Curve. Let's rename That's this right. Right so you know what it is. Or ball A. <laughs> ball A. Everything is ball A. That's going to be my call sign, ball A. <laughs> ball A. All right, we're calling Goose. this guy the curve. Goose and Ballet. Goose and Ballet. <laughs> that's right. Top Gun. Oh, I wonder if they're going to release Top Gun this summer. That's going to be interesting. That's true. That's going to be interesting. But that is that was big movie news before big all this. News. Okay, so we are going to create another sprite. Uh, we are going to draw this guy. So go up to paint. And it is actually just going to be, we always like to use red because red is bad. Bird. 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 And we tend to like to use those weird voices for some reason, too. Bird. It sounds like Bird. a sheep. Bird. 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 All right, so I'm just going to draw a line, huh? That's just going to be our mm -hmm. line. See, it pops up right there. And let's go to the code. And now we can drag this line around. It should be dragged. Well, we'll just draw, drag it pretty high to the top. So when it yeah. hits that top, game over. 
Now, what's this guy going to do? This guy is going to ask you some questions. This is a, uh, we're going to do some random, uh, uh, random questions. So, hey, one thing. So actually, when you drag the red line just right to the edge, are you just going to let the logic of when it touches the edge, it's over because it's pretty much the red line is the edge or would you code it specifically? Like if you dragged it lower, you'd have to code it specifically that when it touched red or something. Yeah, so so basically that's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to, we're, we're gonna, in order to check if the game's over, we're gonna check if the ball is touching this line. So when it hits the edge, it's gonna draw another curve or at least mm. these edges. When that's it, right, so you are gonna have to put edge. that test, that's yeah. right. It should never hit the top edge because it'll hit this line first. So, right. so this line, we're going to put some, uh, we're going to call this the line. Yeah, okay, so we're going to call this the line. And this, the line is actually, even though lines can't usually talk, this one's going to be smart and this is going to be asking you the questions. It's going to be asking you and you are going to pretend to be the scientist who calculates these things super fast so that you can flatten the curve. Right. Um, in the sensing, in the sensing area, we are going to ask, and again, we're going to do this as soon as the green flag is clicked. Where's the green flag? So we're going to ask, "What's your name and weight?" No, we're not. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. That is not <laughs> a scientific no question. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create two variables completely randomly, and uh, we're going to ask you to add those two together. So I'll just do this for you pretty quick. So we're just gonna go into variables. We're gonna make two more variables, one called number one, and we're gonna make another variable, one called number two. Oh, you're about to say it, number two. <laughs> That's right. I got you, I got you. Cannot get away from that, number two. Uh, you cannot get First, away from it, Hansel. I'm gonna make a number one, and then I'm gonna make a number two. <laughs> yeah. Sorry right. about that, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> never apologize for bathroom humor. Yeah. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to ask, uh, ask you to say what is num number one times number two. But first, we're going to set number one and two to a um, random number. Random number. Right, so that's important because we want to make sure we don't uh, give the game away. That's right. All we right. want different questions every time. That's right. We want, and you want them to be know. random. Yep, okay. random. So if we hit operators, we can do pick random number from one to 10. I'm not very smart with my math, so we're gonna go one to 10. <laughs> yeah. It should be pretty easy. Should be able to type that pretty fast. So we don't hit the red line. We don't wanna hit the red line. We don't wanna hit the red line. All right, so number one and two. So we want to say something else in here. We wanna say, what is, what is num one times num two? But that looks pretty lame. What we really wanna do is we wanna put the actual numbers in there. Yeah. So scratch is not super awesome with that but it still works. We are gonna join with a join and a join and a join. <laughs> so what join does is, is of course it joins two um, text, uh, text strings together. They call these yeah. text things strings. So we're gonna say what is, and we're gonna put that right in here. What is banana? <laughs> should we just say what is banana? What, what is, is banana? banana? Wait, we wanna say so what you, is. Yeah. You should put in bread on one and banana on the other. Banana bread. <laughs> ah, it's easier than actually making banana bread. I know. I we can do that. <laughs> All yeah. right, so what is, we gotta have to do another join in here. We're gonna say, what is, join in a join. So what is number one? Now we need to be able to say to, uh, plus number three two. Plus, so, so another join. <laughs> dang, that's three joins. Join, join, join. We need a join, join, join. Join, join, join. They need that's a join, join, join. Official command. Join, join, join. Yeah. Join, Keep join, saying join, 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 join. join. Doesn't that word sound it really weird? sounding like not, it's not even a word anymore. Yeah, join, 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 yeah. join, join, join. <laughs> okay, Matt. Okay, Wayne, you keep saying join while I do the code. <laughs> join, 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 join. Okay. Now, who out there is annoyed? <laughs> okay, we're going to say plus. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. Okay, so we're going to say number one plus number two. Okay. What is number one plus number two and wait? So, uh, well, let's just, let's just click this real quick just to make sure it works, okay? I'm going to break it off here and just click it. So... You can see right here what is five Whoa. plus 10. 
but it doesn't look right. There, the is five is weird. What is yeah. five? What's that? Yeah, because there needs to be a space. Yeah. My wife, Lisa, is big about grammatical spaces. Not two spaces, right. but one space. That's one how space. you can read it. It's going to look better. Let's hit it again. Let's make Lisa happy. Bazinga. Ha ha. What is nine plus five? Two different numbers, and we got a space. All right. So that seems to work. And so what do we want to do? We want to check if that number, uh, whatever the person entered, is actually correct. Whatever the user entered is uh, correct. Yeah. So we are going to do a check. Binary logic. Binary logic alert. Wait, binary we, logic. I keep saying bi binary logic. Why do we call it binary logic? <laughs> well, what? there's, yeah. It, What's it, the origin? It, the origin, I, I don't know. I, I guess binary, right, is zeros and ones. And so there's a, there's kind of two ways, a yes or no. It, so here it's like a if this, then that. So it, it's kind of like, it's going to do a, ask you a question and see they're going to be true or not. That's you know? right. So, so binary basically means there's only two choices. It's, it's either yeah. usually true or false, zero or one. Binary means there's only two choices. And yeah. in this case, it's either true or it's not true. So right. uh, if it's true, it'll do what's in here. If it's not, it'll do it up. It won't do it at what's in there. So that's why it's binary logic. Yeah. All right. So what are we uh, checking against 50? Nothing. So when you do this ask in Scratch, it turns out that whatever the user enters, which is going to be entered right here, goes into this variable, a preset variable called answer. So we're going to stick, we're going to stick answer in here, and we're basically going to check if it equals. Uh, we're doing a plus, so we're going to check if these numbers with whatever the person answered is actually equal to uh, number one plus number two. So we use the plus uh, uh, operator. If it's yeah, equal it's to variable, number variable uh, and you're using number one and number two as variables, put the plus operator in between. So if it is equal, what we want to do is we want to squish the curve down. Now, we haven't done this in our app stream streams yet, but what we want to do is actually talk to the curve. If the answer that we get from the line is correct, we want to tell the curve that the user got it correct and the curve will go down a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to use broadcast. Wayne, what does broadcast do? Broadcast is just like it sounds. You're going to yell out, hey, you're going to just broadcast it. You're going to yell it out and whoever's listening is going to hopefully hear you. That's right. Yell it out right now. Message one. Message <laughs> one. Number two. I mean, Message not number two. number two. Anything but number two. <laughs> okay, we're going to call it something else, though, because we always want to name our uh, everything, something that we understand. Meaningful. So, meaningful, yes. So, we're going to say right answer. So, what we're going to broadcast is right answer. So, if you uh, get the right answer, we're going to broadcast right answer so that curve. Got it. Yeah, so that curve can catch it and then do what it needs to do. Um, now, the one thing is uh, that I'm just going to add in here real quick. Uh, you'll notice that we set these random numbers. We do one ask, and we check if it's right, and then it ends. But, in fact, the way this game works is we want to keep doing that pretty much forever. Pretty much forever. So add in forever. Now then, it's going to ask these questions and keep asking questions. And if you get it right, it's going to broadcast the right answer. So if you get it wrong, then it'll just ask another question, right? That's what we want it to do. So back to the curve now. Ah, uh, so now we gotta we gotta make the curve listen to that listen li be listening for that broadcast. That's right, listening to that broadcast. Now, in Scratch, I don't think it's called a listener, but actually, a listener is a technical term. There's a quick tech talk for you right there. A lot of languages out there has what's called a listener, and actually, what it does is what we're gonna do here. It just sits and listens, kind of like you guys are doing right now at home. Sort of. We're all listeners. That's right. So when I receive, so this is basically their version of a listener. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a starting block, and it it's basically means it's always sitting here listening and waiting for this right answer to be broadcast. Just like this one, the green flag, it's always sitting here waiting, waiting to listen for this green flag to be clicked. So it's, it's essentially a listener. It's and almost it's like these, those two blocks kind of are within their own forever loop in a way. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, always listening, just kind of like this. Kind of like how yeah. you guys are always listening to your parents, right? That's right. right? And if, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> you better be. That's right. All right, so when the ball receives right answer, we want it to just like clear everything and uh, go down a notch, basically. Set your uh, uh, initial height down a notch. So what we're gonna do here is, because this event here is actually separate from this, and what we actually wanna do is talk to this event inside here, gets a little bit tricky. So, so now the line has told this event that it's the right answer. And this answer needs to tell this loop here uh, to you know, clear, uh, clear your curve and, and go, down a spot, uh, go down a notch. So when I receive right answer, I'm gonna do, I'm going to, so broadcasting doesn't make as much sense here. What I'm gonna do instead, because we're inside of the same sprite, I'm going to create a new variable and I'm gonna call it clear. This is, I wouldn't say this is the most efficient way to do things. I, this is the first way I could think of it doing scratch. I don't know if I would do it this way in a normal language, <laughs> but uh, this is the best way I can think of it doing scratch. Uh, so what we're gonna do is when, when I receive right answer, I'm just gonna say set clear. Wait a minute, I'm gonna make this screen bigger so you guys can see it. I'm just gonna set clear to true. So what does that do right now? It doesn't do a thing. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Just this weird variable is equal to true. That's right. Uh, it doesn't do a thing. So what we're going to do is we actually have to check this is repeating until either it touches the edge, which means we're going to draw a new curve, or if we set clear, then it's, then it's going to stop this loop also and then go to the next loop. So what we need to do is check two things here instead of just this touching edge. We want to check. That's right. Or. 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 That's another weird word. <laughs> yeah, Don't you that is it? a really weird word. <laughs> or join. Or join. Or join. Yeah. <laughs> or join. <laughs> I'm cracking it up now, but I probably shouldn't be because I don't know. I don't know. Is that really funny? But it, it just sounds funny. It sounds, sounds funny. funny. Let's just say it. Or I join. <laughs> I don't know. It's very odd. Very okay, odd. Okay, so we want to check. If it's either touching the edge or we get a clear signal. So we just want to say if uh, touching edge or uh, it's uh, clear. Wugga, 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 wugga. Clear is equal to true. Clear is equal to true. Yep. So if clear equals to true, we should also stop that, uh, that, uh, that uh, arch from going and, and create the new one. But it'll basically still do the same one, right? But you know what? We haven't done it in a while, Wayne. We have not tested. We better run this. Program. Yeah, we better <laughs> run it. Something could be broken, probably. This thing could be totally broken. broken. Let's see what happens. I'm going to hit Very play. Broken. And oh, it's still going up. What is, oh, I can't read it. What is one plus five? Five. 19. Oh, so it just killed it. What happened? <laughs> it just killed it. There you go. And the initial height is still going up. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Oh, initial height is going, 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 going. Okay, so what does that mean? We need to, we need to mess with the code. Initial <laughs> height, initial height by two, set that at high. Why so is that? Clear equal to true, and then this thing just stops, so this never repeats again. That's true, because clear is always true, so this is never going to repeat. Bam, nice. That's right. Clear is always equal to true. This, that's basically how you debug, right? You just kind of go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, then we're going to tell you the answer. <laughs> and, and then it will work. And then it will work. Something, <laughs> something good will come of it. But you All gotta right, have so that face. You got to have that face. You got to have that face. That's your debug face. That is it. If you don't have that face, you can't debug. debug. All right. So we want to set clear back to false. Yeah. Down here. Set clear to back to false. False. Okay, right. So yeah, yeah. Let's see that happens. Then, then it can run again. What is three plus seven? Ten. Ten. Oh. Thirteen. It's going too fast. Oh. So it actually did work. It just like went too fast for me. It <laughs> went it really fast. Went yeah. Yeah. So I think that worked. It cleared it. But what we want to do is it, it cleared it, but it actually drew, drew the same arch again. So what we want to do is lower the arch a little bit uh, so that we get a chance to lower it down, right? 
Yeah. So to do that, we, so we can do that in two places. I think we're just going to do it over here on the right side. It's a little bit clearer. We're going to set, uh, oopsie, we're going to change our initial height by like Minus. negative four. Yeah. Let's so that means that once it clears, it. the next time it goes around, it'll go down by four. But because we have this here, it'll go up by two. So net net, it'll go down by two. So right. hopefully when I run it this time, every time I get a right answer, it'll come down a little bit. We got to get the right answers though. 18, six. <laughs> we got to get the right answer. 12, 13. Is it working? Three. Is it working? It's working, 10, eight. Okay, so cool. So it's actually working. 13. It's going down every time I hit it. So that's 15. what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys are super smart, which I know you are, you can do multiplication if you want. You can do a number from one to 100 if you want, one to 1,000, although you would be total genius if you could run it with one to 1,000. <laughs> and still win. Uh, yeah. yeah, but since I'm not a genius, I can only do one to 10. Actually, I probably should have done like one to three. <laughs> then I definitely okay. would win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner again. Always the chicken dinner, that's right. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we just need to check if, if this thing hits the red line, then game over. Um, we're just going to do a very simple thing here. Da, 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 da. If so, we're just going to check at the end of every loop if we are touching the binary logic. Binary logic. If the curve is touching the line, then eh, we'll just tell it to stop. So, stop all here under control. Fair enough. Let's fair enough. Go. Let's see. All right, so I guess that works, that works. That works. Now let's just that leave works. it until it goes up. Let it go. It's it. One more. Uh, hey, hey. What, happened? what happened? Is it going too fast to really touch it? OK, everybody, oh. your debug face. <laughs> if okay. it's touching that, yeah, is it not think it's touching that? Do we need to do sensing the touching the red color or something? No, actually, it is something totally different. <clears throat> So, uh, and I found this bug before. That's the only reason I know it so fast. <laughs> oh, so I thought the face just worked again. <laughs> well, it was also the face. It was, all, yeah. it was also the face because we both did the face. That's, <laughs> That's double, double the face always helps. Even yeah, faster. when you get two people to do the face, you can always figure it out. That's every right. Time. That's why they have paired programming so that they can double <laughs> the face. And people don't know that. That's the yeah. little. That's little. the origin behind the paired programming. Double face. Yeah, to double the debug face. All right, so the reason this isn't working is because what's happening here is this loop in here is actually doing uh, drawing the arch, drawing the curve. Once it's done drawing the curve, then it's going to draw the next curve. But mm. it's actually not checking while it's drawing the curve. Mm. It only checks it if it's complete, once it's completely done with the curve. And it's not done with the curve until you're down here or way up here. So that's why it never hits this red. This is there why it's go. really important to know the logic kids. Um, you could drag that stuff in there, but if you don't know why that works, then you can't really debug it other than using the debug face. <laughs> and you certainly can't tweak it or change it because you'd be very right. confused. So now I put the if statement inside this repeat loop. So what that means is every time it goes up and over one, it'll check whether it hits. So I'm thinking this should work. Let's try it. I'm not going to answer Please. any questions and let's see if it works. But you do know, yeah. He's not going to answer. He does know the answer. I do know. It did it. It did oh. it. It did it. Yeah. Nice. So that that is pretty much the game. I, you know, there's a couple of things that I would probably change in it uh, if we had some time. Um, I don't know how long we've been running now, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I don't know now. But I'll just hit stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I would probably change it to where, you know, the curve should probably, uh, you know, be maybe a little bit smoother. Uh, you might want to have it smooth out at the bottom here. You might want to have the, uh, the, the line go straight across. Um, there's a number of things that you can do to make this per, uh, curve prettier. The thing with the curve, guys, is it's, um, it's not like cloning fun. where <laughs> We have all kinds of cats running around the place. But it is very logic oriented, right? It's very sort of math. You know, my son keeps asking me, why do I need to know all this math? This is part of the reason, right? When you know math, you can figure out the physics of things and how to make a ball move a certain way so it looks realistic. That way you can code video games and make them look realistic. Um, in fact, if we, if, we, if we just had this as a ball, um, actually, I'll do it right now. 
this, this should be super easy to do. I'm just gonna take out the pen down stuff. Um, and we are just gonna run this thing and, and just watch, watch the ball real quick. Oh, the pen down is still going. Why is that? Oh, because the pen is down. Okay. Yeah, because it's not down. up. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Pen right. up. I'm going to erase all, and I'm just going to show you guys real quick, uh, pen up. So if we run this thing, look at the ball. Look at that. Doesn't that look like somebody's actually throwing that ball? Yeah, that is pretty cool. That's it's physics, pic baby. Picture that's the arm awesome. right down there. That's right. Off that's right. Up. That's physics. That's, that's just how physics actually works. And when you know the math behind it and can put it into your code, you can make it actually look like a real game. Uh, and in fact, uh, next week, I think I already said already, we're going we're gonna to play around with more physics and how balls fly around, even coming at you and, and stuff like that. So that should be pretty cool too. Yeah, math and physics and coding actually are very synergistic and they go a lot, you know, really well together. The more yeah. you know of either one of them, help you with the other subjects and they all tie together in a lot of ways. And that's why this stuff is so fun. I don't know about you guys. I'm, you know, Wayne and I are total nerds, but uh, we love solving puzzles. You know, I don't know if you guys get those brain teaser books or whatever. That's what coding really is. Like if I were to challenge you to, to make a curve like this and have it kind of flatten out on the other side, you really have to think through the logic of how to do it. And the best part is you don't need an answer key. The answer key is, is, is what the code actually does, right? If you can make the curve actually do that, then you've got it right. And it, it really is a logic puzzle that's, for me, a lot of fun to do. That's why Scratch uh, is, is so fun for me and Wayne. We, we like to use it all the time just because it's, uh, you know, we can uh, solve some problems. Pretty no, definitely. That is the best part about coding is that you can see what it's doing and that's your answer sheet. And so that's what I love about it. So you know when you got it and it's, it's just really satisfying when you yeah. do get it. So I'll show you guys uh, real quick also the, um, especially the, the intermediate folks, um, which you guys. You know what I realized, mm -hmm. Hansel? Yeah. On What's this that? One? The entire time we never said, you know, how we're supposed to say who we are more often and things like that. <laughs> Hansel and Wayne, this is uh, from the Coder School, AppStream episode three. That's why you're watching anyway, it. Anyway, <laughs> that's why you're watching it. And that's why. Next time yeah. we'll just run a ticker at the bottom. That's probably better. We'll code <laughs> it up. We'll code up a ticker. All right, check this out, guys. Here is uh, Trinket, which is another one of our favorite uh, um, uh, platforms that we use. Uh, this is uh, Python. This is actually, you can type Python into Trinket here and actually run it. And so here's some of the code here. You guys, if you really want to, you could pause and type it in if you'd like uh, under Trinket.io. Uh, I will run it for you guys real quick. And you can, let me, let me see what that does. No semicolons. No yeah. semicolons. What does it do? It doesn't do anything. Who messed up my code? <laughs> <laughs> Who's been messing with my code? Yeah. Why is that not running? Hey. Okay. I'm going to, uh, let's see. I'm going to see if I can reopen this trinket. And if it doesn't work, well, sorry. It's just a live bug, I guess. Yeah. Why would that not be running? <laughs> Draw, run, sleep time. Background size. Well, it should be running. <laughs> yeah, that is. So you weird. have to trust me on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's lame. Okay. All right. So, so okay. Well, so this is what Python looks like. I don't. I don't know. I must have like hit something in here. I don't really have time to like check why it's not running. But what I'll show you yeah. is. Uh, but you guys can see though. This is what Python looks like. This does very similar to what the other one did, but it, the curve is smoother. It does actually curve out and flatten out at the bot at the at the end. Um, right. But this is the amount of code is in there. Uh, a, it's about colon. the same amount of code, but you can see you have to type it all out, right? And if, right. if I miss this semicolon, I'm going to take this thing out and I try to run it. It gives me an error, right? right. That's all it takes is a semicolon to to really get it to not work, basically. Yeah. Now, I'm kind of bummed that it doesn't work because I was going to show you guys something cool. But I will go over here to JavaScript. Uh, this is the same thing. Now, this uh, one better work now. This one, if this doesn't work, then something is wrong with my code. And again, you, that was good acting again on the other, on the Python <laughs> one, because we want to teach a lesson that when you're going to do like a live stream or something, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. Okay. So this, I think that works. So I'm going to slow that down. Oh, cool. for you guys. So you can see guys that, uh, so this is called openprocessing.org. This uses JavaScript to run it. It is, uh, it uses JavaScript, but it also uses a, a separate thing called processing to help it draw on, on here. Um, but I'll show you guys real quick that uh, in JavaScript, 
It's about the same amount of code. It looks yeah. somewhat similar, but not really the same. Instead of colons, like Wayne says, we're going to do semicolons here. The JavaScript has a lot of semicolons. Python doesn't. So it's pretty similar. Um, but yeah. you can see if I run it, I don't know if you guys can see how slow it is. Ooh. Now that curve is much smoother. You can see that, that at the end also it, uh, it curves over and then, I, and then it kind of blows up. <laughs> but you can see that, I'll, actually, I'm going to stop a curve. Let me see if I can stop a curve. So you can see that this curve kind of goes up slowly and then it kind of goes down slowly, but it also just evens out here. Yeah. Uh, and this isn't this this is just part of the code. This is how I coded it to to, to kind of self flatten. And so for you intermediate coders out there, that's one of your challenges. It actually took me a little bit um, to figure out how to do that. But once you do, it's like, hey, this awesome problem solved. Um, I also want to show you that uh, you know Wayne mentioned earlier in 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 our talk that JavaScript runs on the web, and and that's so this is JavaScript. This is running directly on this web browser, um, and because it's meant to do that, it runs really fast. I actually have this sleep in here because that slows down every time I do the curve. Now, if I don't have this sleep in there, sleep just basically says, you know, pause for 300 milliseconds. If I don't put it in there, what's going to happen is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's that fast. JavaScript, because it's, it is JavaScript, it just draws it so fast that your eyes can't see it. Um, I wish I could show you the Python version. Hey, there it is. <laughs> What happened? Hey, it's really slow. Maybe you just didn't have a sleep in there and it just, it was too fast. Maybe. Let me see. Yeah, Let me see if this works. It's all working. Ah, still not working. Yeah. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to say that's the server's fault. Although that's probably not. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. Blame in, it in, on the uh, server. We could put on our debug faces and then there is the blame it on the server. <laughs> that's right. There's, there's, there's a, a two ways. ways. That's always Whenever out. you hit a bug, there's always a way around it. You can always blame it on the server. <laughs> You know, I always blame it on the server, especially if your boss has got a deadline and it's still not working. Blame yeah. it on the server. You guys can think about that in like 15 years when you have a job. Coding. 15 years. <laughs> just remember that nugget. Blame it on the server. Yep. That's the one thing to remember. All right, guys. So sorry I couldn't show you the Python. I hope that JavaScript uh, thing uh, was interesting. Uh, if you're intermediate, again, go for it. You don't have to do it. You don't even have to do it in JavaScript or Python. For you intermediate coders, if you can get that curve to curve back down and not just fall straight down, get it to curve over. That's a big challenge. You can do it in Scratch because honestly, like Wayne says, the syntax doesn't matter. What really matters is understanding the logic and how the, uh, the code works. Right. So what else have we got? I think that's it. I think that's it for AppStream 3. Call it a day. Go, go, watch, uh, go watch The Last Dance. This is, we are recording this on Sunday. The Last um, Dance. So we are yeah, excited to go out. watch Michael Jordan's Last Dance. That's Hope true. you guys are uh, uh hope you guys uh, stay healthy and are good uh happy coding and we will see you next time happy coding